Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bedrock Guide. We've got some fun things in store for today's episode, but first, where in the world has Blue Jay been? Or maybe we should ask, where in the world has Flu Jay been? Whoever came up with that joke online, you're the worst. It's not even funny. Okay, maybe it's a little funny, but it's mean. So for the past couple of weeks, I have been fighting the awful, terrible virus known as COVID. 19. And even when I was starting to feel a little bit better, I was just so exhausted that I really did not have the energy to put into videos or even play Minecraft at all. So we are getting back into the swing of things today. Thank you for your patience. And for everybody that already knew what was going on, thank you for the well wishes. I really do appreciate it. You may not have noticed either that I've got an entirely brand new set of netherite tools and armor, uh, because on one of the days that I was sick and I was just trying to do a little bit of AFK stuff, I forgot that I was AFK and uh, was AFK out in the middle of the open and a drowned got me and all of my stuff along with it just despawned. It's all gone. So we got a brand new set of gear. Also been doing a little bit more work on the backside of the mountain here, which is looking pretty good. And we finally got rid of this mess over here. There were about four double chests worth of junk and a bunch of shulkers laying around. And we finally hooked up our bulk storage as well. So it hasn't been a complete waste of a couple of weeks. We got a few small things done that I've always wanted to, uh, take care of but just haven't really had the motivation or time to do so yeah we got things cleaned up if you remember a few weeks ago we got one of two guidebook challenges from prowl and this one says you must defeat a pillager raid at a random village not let any villagers die and you cannot wear your elytra during the raid. So we're gonna make sure to accomplish this challenge while showing you a couple of different ways to fight a pillager raid. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do for today's episode to get a pillager raid going, uh, we need to find a pillager captain. You can find a pillager captain in three different places, one of which is this right here. This is a pillager outpost and inside of pillager outposts, you can find you guessed it, pillagers, but it does not look like anybody is home. You can also find pillagers at Woodland Mansions, and I do not honestly know where a Woodland Mansion is in this world. I know Prowl does, because he's been to one for his guidebook challenge that we challenged him with. So we're going to be left with the third and final option of wandering the terrain, looking for a pillager patrol. Every pillager patrol has a pillager captain. And if my eyes don't deceive me, there is a pillager right there. I do not see a flag, so he is not the captain, but I'm hoping the captain is not too far away. Hey, buddy. Nope, nope, we're not gonna play that. We're not gonna play that. I don't think he has any friends. Yeah, he definitely has no friends. Oh, here's a friend. You're still not the friend we're looking for. Where are, you, where are your other friends? It's dark, it's hard to see, but he's carrying a flag. That is a pillager captain. And he is very, very important because when we defeat the pillager captain, come here, buddy. You're a demonstration for today. There we go. We have officially acquired the bad omen. We have this for over an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes. And so we should have enough time to go find ourselves a village. We're going to walk up to a random village, which is right over that hill. These unsuspecting villagers are not gonna know what hit them. Uh, we're going to walk over there and we're actually gonna go ahead and set our spawn here, just in case we happen to die, which I don't see happening, but you know, stranger things have happened. We're just gonna walk over here and we're going to try to defeat this raid. So the way that you start a raid is you do have to have bad omen and you do need to walk within proximity of an active village, which means there needs to be beds there and there needs to be villagers there. As soon as you enter the perimeter of the village, you will see the raid bar going across the top there, just like so. And uh, you'll start hearing pillager sounds, pillager horns to be exact. And these villagers will start freaking out and running away. So we need to protect them and we need to figure out where these raids are coming from. Each pillager raid has several waves depending on difficulty. So here we go. We've got our first wave. They're going to ignore me and go straight after villagers. So we're going to have to be very, very careful and make sure that we don't let all of these villagers die. Because if all of the villagers die, the raid ends and we lose. The first wave 
wave of the raid is actually relatively easy because it is just pillagers with crossbows. The next one gets slightly more difficult with pillagers and vindicators. Vindicators walk around with an ax and they're very fast. So you gotta be very careful. One thing that you should do is if you're going to be doing a raid, try to wear a pair of headphones while doing the raid because if you do, you'll be able to hear the pillager horn and where it's coming from and that'll help you to hear where each wave is at. We gotta be very careful because this guy is going after villagers. Oh no, run away villagers. <laughs> Now, I haven't seen any villagers die yet, and I didn't actually count how many villagers there were before we started this, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that none have died yet because we have gotten to the wave parties uh, before they've reached any of our villagers. Oh no, they're over there. I see them. They're inside the village. We gotta get to them before they get to the villagers. I hear zombie knocking down door. That's not good either. That's not good either. No, leave them alone. Iron Golem, do your job. <laughs> There is a chance that an iron golem will spawn in here to, to help naturally protect these guys. Uh, so that will actually help us out quite a bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and sleep as soon as this wave is done because there are too many bad guys out at night here that we gotta take care of. So this witch right here, we're gonna be very careful and strategic. We're gonna use our bow. We're not gonna get anywhere near the witch because we don't wanna get the poison effect. We're just gonna take that witch out and it'll be just fine. Now, I don't believe that witch was part of the raid party because in wave three, there are only pillagers and a ravager. And I have not seen the ravager. I'm not sure where that is. Oh no. Oh, the zombie got to our villager. That doesn't count as a death though. That doesn't count. Cause he wasn't part of the raid party. There's the ravager. There's the ravager. I found him. That should be the only ravager in this party. There should be only one more pillager to take out. Another thing to keep in mind with these uh, pillager raids, if you don't find a pillager, let's say we've got one left in this party. There's one left in the wave, okay? If we don't happen to find him after 40 minutes, this raid will expire and we will not have to finish the raid. Now we'll lose, we won't gain hero of the village, but you know, the village will still be standing. So that is one of the ways that the raid can end. Another way that the raid can end is if you happen to lose all the villagers in the village, or if they happen to break all of the beds, the raid will end that way as well. But the way that we want the raid to end is that we want all of the villagers to survive and we wanna defeat all of the raid waves. Okay, so here is the final pillager in the party and we've taken him down, we're good to go. This is where things start to get a little bit more challenging with wave four, we're going to encounter pillagers and witches. The witches are actually part of the party and they do throw poison and it's not fun. So just keep your distance. If you're gonna fight them like this, make sure you've got a decent bow and it must have infinity on it because infinity is the only way to go with a bow in the game. So here we go, we're gonna take him out. We're gonna take him out. We're gonna be just fine. They won't even reach us with the poison. It'll be just fine. Couple of hits and they're down. So let's talk about loot for just a second. While we're finishing up this raid, uh, with our pillager raid, we can get random things from pickaxes to chest plates to boots to crossbows, enchanted books. You can also get emeralds. We've actually already got 26 emeralds just from this raid. That is not bad. So let's be very careful because we have a couple of ravagers, I believe, coming this round. The ravagers are very strong. We want to make sure that we keep our distance to keep the damage down and oh no i believe this guy's going after somebody let's go let's go let's go come here bud come after me instead come here come here come here so one ravager is down an interesting thing about ravagers as well is they do have saddles equipped on their backs but a player cannot actually ride a ravager it is not possible don't even try it will not work you're just gonna look really silly while you're trying to ride one of these guys Okay, here we go. This guy right here, he is a bit of a challenge. This is an evoker. They start spawning in wave five and they're challenging because they have a couple of different attacks. The first one is a fang attack that you just saw there. They will send the fang attack in a straight line, but if you get too close, then he's gonna shoot that fang attack in a circle. I'm gonna do it just to show you. Here we go. Ready? Hey, buddy. Oh no, vexes. Okay, that's the other attack that he's got and those guys are actually pretty bad. We'll talk about them in a second. Hey, no, not gonna do it. Well, he's supposed to send his fangs out in a circle, but it doesn't look like he's gonna do it. Okay, there it is. I guess it doesn't work. Well, he's supposed to have a circle fang attack. Maybe that's broken. Maybe it doesn't work in Bedrock Edition. I'm not exactly sure. In wave six, we're gonna see pillagers, vindicators, and more evokers. And it's just gonna get even more challenging from here. Here come all of our pillagers. Let's try to get as many of them with bows as possible before they get too close. Ow, ow, 
Hey! In Wave 7, which is about to start right now, we're going to encounter Vindicators, Witches, Evokers, Ravagers with a Pillager, and Ravagers with an Evoker. This is about to get real challenging, folks, okay? So we're gonna we're gonna play it safe. We're gonna go ahead and put a, a totem of undying that we've picked up from one of the evokers, and that will help us not to die, just in case our health gets a little bit too low. Oh my gosh, keep your distance. Keep your distance. Keep your distance. The Vex that spawn from the evokers, they're actually quite dangerous for a couple of reasons, because they do not actually play into the mob cap of the raid. They can exist even after the raid has finished, and still kill off your villagers. So if you have vexes still lurking around with your villagers after the raid is over and your villagers are at your iron farm or they're at your trading hall or things like that and you've accidentally started a raid there, you're going to get rid of those vexes as soon as possible. They are one of the first guys that you want to get rid of as soon as you see them because no matter how much you protect your villagers, they can fly through walls and they can attack anything and everything from you to a villager to a wandering trader to an iron golem. So just be very careful. They're very dangerous and they don't care about boundaries. They can't get hurt in water. They can't get hurt in lava. Nothing. They're basically indestructible unless you take them down yourself. All right, let's go ahead and take out this evoker right here. He is down and we only have two more pillagers left. One more evoker. That guy is down. Let's go ahead and get another totem of undying. We'll toss the boots to the side. Don't really care about that. And this will be our last pillager. And I believe we have saved all of our villager friends. I haven't seen a single one of them go into a house. I haven't seen a single one of them die. And that's it, folks. We have earned the hero of of the village effect. Because we have managed to save our villagers, they are very grateful for our help, and we have earned the hero of the village effect. As long as we are within proximity of this village, we can go up to our villagers and they will give us a nice little discount on any of their trades. Okay, so that is basically the, oh no, I ran upon a village with the bad omen effect and accidentally started a pillager raid. What do you do to be a little bit more prepared if you're trying to start a raid intentionally, either for fun or for some extra loot. Our second method for fighting this raid is to wall off the entire village. This entire area is completely shut off from the outside world by these diorite walls, and we've made sure to cover up the hills as well so that they can't jump over the walls, hopefully. Hopefully we haven't missed any spots, but let's go ahead and try to find our first little raid party here. Here we go. There's a pillager right there. We'll take him out with our bow. We shouldn't have to have any close quarters contact with these guys, and it should be a relatively easy fight. Now, I do know that there are only two villagers in this village. I counted them before we started. It is a relatively small village, so... Because we didn't know the number of villagers in the last raid, we'll go ahead and count this one as our guidebook challenge from Prowl. Which means, let's go ahead and take off our elytra so that we can't fly away. I can't die, no villagers can die, and I feel like we're pretty safe on that front. The other thing I should mention as well is that I did light up most of this area with torches so that no other mobs can spawn in this area once it gets dark, which it is getting dark right now. Just be mindful of other mobs that might be able to break in, like zombies to go bust down the doors and zombify your villagers. Oh boy, I think he's actually gonna jump the wall. He did jump the wall. So be very careful if you've got ravagers jumping over a hill. They can actually make that one gap jump. This is where our wall method might be a little bit less effective. I'm thinking these guys actually might have spawned below the village. I don't see them around the perimeter, but I hear them. So we're going to dig down just a little bit. Hey, there we go. And even sometimes with your best laid plans, they're going to spawn somewhere you don't want them really to be. Uh, and these guys are all down in a cave. So hopefully this should be relatively easy to take them down. Oh no. Oh, okay. Okay. There's our other ravager. There he is. Hey, buddy. Okay, now let's get back up top. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, there he is. It's, a, it's an evoker. That's our last guy. And with that, that is the hero of the village. We've completed the raid. And let's go make sure that all of our villagers are safe. Again, we only had two to start with. So as long as we have two villagers in this village somewhere, 
We are good to go. Our guidebook challenge is complete. Okay, well, I think it's quite possible that one of our two villagers got defeated because I don't see the second one. I'm not sure where he went. I guess the third time's a charm. Let's do this again. And for our final method, you may have noticed several of these iron teas laying around this village. We're gonna show you what this is for here in just a moment. I'm gonna find a bed because I'm not sure where I left mine. And we're gonna sleep the night away. And we're gonna kick off this raid by walking around and spawning in a bunch of iron golems. Now we gotta be careful because there's already pillagers on the inside here. We got one iron golem. Look at them fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got to spawn a few more of these in. We got to be very careful. I do have my villagers already trapped and protected. So hopefully these guys should be able to take care of the rest and we won't have to do much work. As you can see, we've already completed the first wave and I have not had to do much. And just look at that raid wave tick down to zero. Wave two is complete. I did absolutely nothing that round. We're going to be able to just sit back and relax and enjoy the show. We've got a villager trapped here. We've got a couple of villagers trapped in here. We'll spawn in a couple more iron golems just to be safe. We got a villager trapped here and a villager trapped here. None of these villagers should be in any kind of danger because we have nearly 32 iron golems protecting this village. And I believe we will have 32 by the end of it right here. We'll spawn in these last two iron golems. We have 32, a half stack of iron golems protecting our village. We shouldn't have to do much of anything. Let's try to figure out where the next wave is coming from and we'll see what happens. Oh, and just so that Prowl can't say that I'm cheating, we haven't used our elytra yet. We're taking that off. Look at him fly, dude. <laughs> Okay, there was nothing in the rules about iron golems attacking our pillager raids. Look at them fly up in the air, dude. This is the best. Oh, it's so great. Ow, cactus. Oh, no, it looks like we've got an iron golem down. He's down. That's the first one that's gone down. So let's kind of draw some of these guys over here. Come on, guys. Iron golems should protect us. There we go. Look at him fly. <laughs> This is so great. Oh, my word. Iron golems are strong, man. Look at that. They just took those ravagers down with no trouble at all. This is the way to fight a pillager raid right here, my friends. And he didn't even have a chance to spawn any Vex into the raid. So that's great. Now, again, I'm just going to review these rules just to make sure you must defeat a pillager raid at a random village, not let any villagers die, and you cannot wear your elytra during the raid. We are abiding by all of those rules right now. We do not have our elytra. We are not going to let any villagers die. This is a random village, and that's it. We're going to complete this guidebook challenge without lifting a single finger. Go, Iron Golems, go! <laughs> Some of you guys need to come over here and help. We're running out of iron golems. Come on, guys. Okay, there goes another pillager down. There goes another ravager up in the air. Oh, okay, that's the circle attack I was talking about earlier. If you get too close to an evoker while they are doing their fang attack, they will attack in a circle rather than a straight line coming at you. So it does indeed work. It just was not working on us a little bit earlier on the first raid. Okay, this guy's gonna come at us. So we might have to actually do a little bit of work here, try to help out. But this cactus, I think is gonna take care of that guy. And bada bing, bada boom, there we go. There's the next wave complete. And that's it, that's the entire raid finished 32 iron golems and we only had to attack a couple of pillagers that's the way to do it right there my friends let's double check and make sure all of our villagers survived one two three four five and six all six villagers did survive we survived, we did not use our elytra, and we defeated the raid. Now all that there is left to do is to go around and collect some of this loot, and we can go ahead and call it a day. And I guess we can go ahead and free these villagers, let them come out of their homes. That would be the kind thing to do, right? Oh no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, buddy. But guys, that is gonna do it for today. We're gonna say goodbye to our village here and all of our iron golems. They're gonna live here forever and protect this village. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you 
enjoyed watching a couple of different ways that you can fight a pillager raid and win. If you have any other suggestions of ways that you can fight pillager raids, leave them in the comment section now. I would love to hear some of the ways that you guys tackle these things. They are quite fun, and if you've never fought one before, don't be intimidated. Just give it a try and maybe bring a few iron golems with you for protection. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe so you don't miss any more Bedrock Guide content just like this. But thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.